Hey, it's the odd man. I bought this big wary with the intention of converting it from fixed thwarts to a sliding seat rowboat. All right, well, here's the story. I was looking for a boat to use on the East Coast, and I wanted something slightly bigger than my 15 and a half foot Oxford Wherry. It's a great boat, but it needs just a little more space to haul my camping gear. And I'll continue to use it because it is a great boat. What I'm going to do is remove the thwarts and put in a sliding seat system. These thwarts are like three quarter inch maple or something. And the foredeck looks glorious, but man, that thing must weigh 50 pounds. That's an exaggeration, of course. It looks like it's pretty well glued in, so I will probably just cut it away and make a breast hook out of it. One of my dad's favorite phrases was, don't force it, just use a bigger hammer. I've embraced that. That's the first one I've had delaminate like that. Gonna take a little repair. I took 25 pounds of material out of the boat. Okay, well, as you can see, I've gotten the sanding done in all the places that I removed those thwarts. Except, of course, these two that I forgot. So I have to go back and catch those. The next step in this is going to be figuring out where the sliding seat rig goes and where the outriggers go to determine if I can retain these blocks. The prior owner had put those in in an attempt to 
have a way to mount the ore locks, but wasn't successful. If they're in the right place, they're going to be quite useful, but it seems unlikely I'll get that lucky. So I'll probably end up taking them out like I did all these thwarts. When I mount the sliding seats, I need to include brackets for them to attach to in the bottom of the boat. So I won't do any varnishing until I've done all the epoxy work because I think there's a coat of varnish in this. So any place that I'm going to do epoxy, I'm going to have to sand off the varnish. I've got to figure out a name for the boat. This is my other boat. This is the 15 and a half foot Oxford Wherry. You can see the sliding seat unit that I've used comfortably and successfully for some time. Oh, you can also see the broken frame that I need to fix. There's the tabs I'm talking about that need to go on the bottom of the boat. This unit is about 50, 50 inches long. And in this boat, I need to put two of them because this should be a double. And I'll rig it so that I can take one out move the other one to the center, then I can row it either as a single or a double. You know, like usual, I expect 99% of my rowing to be by myself. But I have a daughter that is so competent at this stuff that it'd be fun to be able to row with her. And this boat, eventually, I'm going to take to the East Coast. and It'll be my East Coast boat. Because as you know, I have two children that live on the East Coast and a child and a sister that live on the West Coast. So a guy needs a West Coast boat and an East Coast boat. East Coast boat west coast boat it's kind of funny this boat is really fast i love rowing it but it looks kind of pudgy compared to the new one this one isn't really pudgy at all and i'm hoping that that translates into a better ability of me to row the thing because it's so big and heavy i'm concerned about being able to move it effectively One of the things that made this project easier was that the cross-section of both boats at amidships were almost exactly the same. So it took very little adjustment to the sliding seat portion of the rig to get the, all the measurements correct. As you can see, I'm using the instructions and the existing setup on the Oxford Wherry to create this system for the new boat. Determining where the sliding seats went in the boat was kind of tough. I sat on them and measured where the middle of the slide was in my normal forward and backwards motion and then based on the same proportions as the Oxford Wherry placed them in the boat. And then before any work was done I put it in the water and tested the balance fore and aft. Then of course it was just a question of making and installing brackets to hold them and finishing the rest of the install on the sliding seats. Once I had the location for the sliding seats determined, then I could figure out where the block goes for mounting the outriggers. Then it was time to move on to the outriggers. The location fore and aft was already determined by where the blocks were. The size and shape of the outriggers were determined by the plans. And the only remaining item was how far apart the oar locks should be. Okay, so I'm trying to figure out where the oars should be set, how long the outrigger should be to get a similar amount of overlap. This is where the book, The Nuts and Bolts Guide to Rigging by Mike Davenport was valuable. The book provided a calculation for leverage, an explanation of how it should work, and suggested values, which I then compared to my actual on the Lydia and tried to make the new wary match.
when you row, the oars sit in a flat spot on that collar. And then as you And when you feather the oars, they sit on a different flat spot. So that works, that all works fine. And I've got the angle set just about right. But I have a little issue with these oar locks. The collar on the oar scoots up into that, into the oar lock. It turns out that these oar locks are for sweep boats. The kind of boats that have one person per oar. And this boat is, of course, a sculling boat, which has two oars per person. And these oar locks are apparently a little larger. I bought these oar locks from the local rowing group. Should have known they were for sculling boats. The way I dressed this was to just tighten this all the way, move this nut all the way in and tighten this down. And it's just about okay. Not sure it's readily apparent here, but standing here in person, it's clear that these are different size oar locks. In this case, the Angus plan didn't help me any. He calls for half inch bolts, which fit the inserts on the sweep oar locks just fine. But you can see that the half inch bolts didn't fit the inserts on the sculling oar lock. So there was kind of a mismatch there. So with the sculling oar locks, the half inch bolt works great, but the lengths were a little awkward. So I'm not sure I've got the right length bolt in there. This may take a little more experimentation to get right, but I think it'll work for now. I had tested it once long before it was ready to go, and I tested it a second time when I had the rigger and the seat installed to just be sure it rode okay. And then, of course, once it was all complete and done, I took it up for a final test. So now there's just some outfitting to do in my electrical system to finish up, but it's ready to go. Look for me again in June when I'm doing the 7048. Thanks for watching. I'm going home This is the odd man, out.